back, everybody. I am Stefan Adika. You're an artist on record. Your ultimate intimate conversation with your favorite artist. And if it is your first time here and you love vinyl and rock and roll stories, subscribe. Hit the bell to be reminded so you don't miss any other episodes. I want action tonight. Satisfied. We have right here Ricky Rocket of Poison. You're not going to want to miss this one, everybody. Rat decided to take us on the road. And so we got another single. They're like, okay, but you can't have as much money for this single. And you can't have as much money for the for the video. We, you're almost out of budget. Okay. So we're like, okay. So we're like, how are we going to make a video like this? Let's have absolutely no continuity, okay? Like, just put everything on. Like, who cares if you look different in one scene than the next scene? I mean, we just went nuts with it, right? It was shot in a day. And, you know, uh, there was even stuff we didn't use, you know what I mean, in that. Like, there was a – I was actually at a – like, there was a projection of a movie, and I'm with these two twins and, a, and an old Cadillac in an alley, which was, you know, at the drive-in, you know, and I was in this old, not a cat, I was in an old Ford, actually. You know and, um, you know, stuff like that we didn't use. There's some stills of it out there. But we just decided to have fun. Like, let's just go nuts. Let's just nuts. Let's just, yeah. and when I fell off the riser, the, the riser that we ordered, right, uh, they they ran out of materials. I mean, I'm not even kidding you. Like, oh this my God. how poor we were. <laughs> so it was like, they're like, just make sure you don't back up too far. And I'm like, not a problem. I'm standing right here. Well, the as I'm rocking, right, the, the throne starts moving back and fell off. And I fell off and everybody comes rushing up. They stop the music and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I think so. They're like, can we use it? And I'm like, you better use it. <laughs> I just almost broke my back for this. <laughs> oh my God. How scary, huh? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, because I I mean I seriously fell off. I was not, yeah. you know, I didn't and then I think people came to see us live and was hoping that I'd fall off. And I'm like, well, can we like do a riser and have a mattress or something and I'll fall <laughs> off and like, well, then how are you going to keep going with a song? You know? And so, you know, I, oh, okay, we'll make it our room. stick. Then we'll get back up. And, you know, I mean, I, so yeah. we never did it, by the way. I mean, that's pretty punk um, rock right there. That's a Keith Moon punk yeah. rock scene right there. <laughs> it is. Sure. But if you force it, it's not the same. So, no, you know. No. Um, right. So you guys really did yeah. pay your dues in the beginning, man, huh? You were really, you guys struggling, huh? Yeah, we did. We didn't, you know, but... When CC joined, I mean, it really turned things around because I think it, it, it we just congealed so much better with him. Now, Matt is is a great player. He's a good dude. Um, he played, you know, he had that slinky Joe Perry kind of thing going, mm -hmm. and it was really cool. But it didn't have that same energy that we needed to, like, mm -hmm. really. And, and CC's a really good writer, and he's a good interpreter. Like if you sit there and you go, yeah, I want to do something that has like a na na na, but then and I can play enough guitar to show something, but I couldn't play on a record. Um, maybe I could, uh, but he'll interpret it. He'll go, and that'd be better if it was in C, and you know what I mean. And and he yeah. picks right up on it, you know. Uh, but he has a great pop sensibility, mm -hmm. and because we were a cover band for so long, I think we had a great library of pop songs in our library to pull from and go hey, this would be great in this part um hey you remember when you know i don't know whoever did this little piece you know let's pull from that you know so yeah. i i think that the pop sensibility helped from being in a now when i say top 40 i mean like our top 40 was hard rock top 40 okay so mm -hmm. it was more album oriented rock 
40, uh, <laughs> the top 40. Um, but we were blessed with some cool radio stations back there. You know what yeah. I mean? CC is one of those guitar plays underrated because he really is good. And he doesn't get like the recognition he should get because the guy I've jammed with him. I've seen him jam live, spur the moment. He is a really great guitar player, CC. You know what? I think, you know, I hate to go into all this, but there was a lot of drugs. Okay. And I feel like the only time CC was ever sloppy mm -hmm. is when he was fucked up yeah he's not a sloppy guitar player no he's really he knows exactly what he's doing he's very schooled he's solid as shit and you know yeah. so the only time any of us got sloppy was when we were just you know wasted basically yeah um but we kept that under wraps like Guns N' Roses, like, wanted the world to know they were fucked up. We didn't want people to know. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> we, no, we're, we're like, uh, I mean, Capital didn't know what to do with us when when they finally got a hold of us. Because we went from Enigma Records to Capital, right, sort of. We were yeah. under the wing of Capital. And Capital goes, you know, okay, we have Skinny Puppy. Uh, we have Duran Duran. And we have Iron Maiden, and we're not sure where to put you. I'm like, well, we're not Skinny Puppy, and we're not Duran Duran, although there's a little – we're Iron Maiden on a Duran Duran level, maybe, kind of. <laughs> Certainly not with the integrity of Skinny Puppy. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I think, you know, at first they were sticking us on weird bills, man. You know, they didn't know where to put us, you know. And we actually wound up opening for Duran Duran in Spain. That's so funny. And uh, yeah, um, it, it was crazy. And then we played with these really heavy bands and we were just, they didn't, we had to find our own place. You know, we really did. It was like, how do you take this club band from Pennsylvania and uh, with the kind of the vibe of the dolls with van halen arena rock headspace with this you, you had big bit song. of commercial yeah. yeah i mean it was all about you, the you guys songs. had so we, that's, we, the, that's the one thing that you guys had like new york dolls the attitude the vibe was good the johnny thunders all that you know the danger of it the songs were never big they were never going to be big big you guys and even on this first record when you think about it cry tough i won't i want action I won't forget you, the ballad. I mean, you think about these songs, Talk Dirty to Me, which you hear to this day, behind all the makeup, the songs are still good. You'll see some hillbilly truck driver listening to Talk Dirty in his car that would never, ever think to ever get up and dress like this and go on the streets. And it's pretty- Hey, man, pretty Weezer did it. Weezer that, did a right. cover. And they did a great job with it, that's too. Right. It was awesome. These are great songs you guys did. Moving forward, you know, even songs later on, you know, every, you know, every rose, but but this for the first record to come out, it's a strong album, man. Something to be proud of, and it still still stands the time today, the test of times till today. You got Weezer covering it. I mean, did you, you know? Think, and the thing back then, do you ever think, Ricky, like, hey, this is going to be people be listening to this twenty years, thirty years? Did you think that ever? No, I I mean, I didn't think past that really no. so much. Our main thing was we love to have a live show. So we wrote our songs as a soundtrack to the live show. That's what we cared about. Later, I think bands started saying, I don't care. Album's an album. Live is live. We'll figure that out later. We didn't think that way. So there were certain aspects of it we even kept simple. You know, like, you know, I wanted to be able to stand up to and play that yeah if yeah. i did some complicated fill i couldn't i'm just another drummer sitting there right so i wanted the whole audience to go uh you know i yes. I, I, yeah. I was thinking um visually as well as music <clears throat> kind of a, a kiss head space in that yeah. sense you know what i mean um and so i, th I think that you know and then we evolved over time because I think what, you know, music started to evolve and what people wanted started to evolve. Um, I think what we did on Native Tongue was absolutely on time. It was just with the wrong guy at the wrong time somehow mm -hmm. uh, in terms of when we delivered it. But uh, but it did good. 
actually yeah. a lot better than people give it credit for. <laughs> True. And I know you probably answer this all the time. Was Slash ever going to be a part of Poison or is that a rumor? No, there was a, a big push. I mean, it, it was literally, it came down to CC and Slash. And wow. And we didn't know what to do. Matt Smith, our old guitar player, was a huge proponent for Slash. He said he'd show him the songs and everything like that. Um, and, you know, it just, CC just gelled with us better. Those types of songs, the way he came across, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and look, you got two great bands out of it. I mean, I yeah. wouldn't, uh, what, what would happen if, the, like I said, let's go back to earlier, the parallel universe where we would have went a different way, right? I don't know how that would have worked. Uh, there's there's no way to know, you know? Um, but it wouldn't have been the same band, that's for sure, on all levels. No, it no. would have sounded completely different. Um, but I like Slash. I know we had this weird rift with Guns N' Roses for a while, but it was more like, we were vying for the attention of management. We had the same management for a while. And it's like, no, 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 you need to pay attention to us. No, no, no. You need to pay. And it was more of that kind of thing, I think. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Axel and um, uh, Axel's band, Hollywood Rose was the first band Brett and I ever saw out here. Um, Athena took us to see it. She was dating the other guitar player in the band. Or wow. maybe it was a bass player. I don't remember. Uh, and we went to see Hollywood Rose, you know, and then, you know, later, of course, you know, Tracy joined and with Axel and it was Guns yeah. N' Roses. And then he left that and walked away from that and it, Slash it, walked in. So the um, whole scene back then, it was such a, a scene back then because you had the Holly, you had Hollywood Rose and you had LA Guns and you had Paul Black. You had all these different people, these different versions. And it was just all like everybody jumping into the same bed. You know, different times. It's just such a weird scene, but the music was so. You different. know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reveal this for the first time. <laughs> so there was a band called the Joneses, right? I remember the, the Joneses, guy, Jeff Jones. Yeah. One guy in the band would wear this cop hat and I'm like a mod jacket down to his knees sometimes, mm -hmm. and I stole that. I'm like, that's fucking looks badass, right? So I did it, and then Duff McKagan did it, and we run into each other at the Troubadour one night and Duff goes, this town ain't big enough for the both of us. You know that. And, and it was in a friendly way, like, and we laughed about it. And, um, but it was, it was funny because we were both doing that kind of thing. And then I kind of changed up a little bit after that, I feel like. Um, but yeah, like it's, you know, yeah, the Joneses. I'm sorry, guys. I stole that idea from you. <laughs> well, you know, it's so funny. You mentioned the Joneses because there was a time, that I got to jam with Jeff Jones for a short time, a really short time. He was putting a band together. And I think he has a funny story too, but I don't, I don't know how to get in touch with the guy, but uh, I think he, I think he might've, uh, I think he, Paul Black told me, I think he robbed a bank or something. Ended up. Yeah. Uh... It's a, a crazy story, but he didn't have a gun. He just went in there with his finger <laughs> And he, and he went home at that time. It was the Hollywood scene and people were doing their dope and whatever and whatever. I think he went and copped and then the cops went to his house and got him and took him away. And then he got out and he was, he's a legendary band. You don't know the Joneses. And I just got there. I'm like, no, I don't know. They were the band that influenced George, everybody. <laughs> you know? the, they, they were phenomenal. They were. Um, but re really quickly back in Pennsylvania, we played at the Pine Grove Inn. Okay. We used to we used one of our regular gigs. Rock your hiney at the piney. And we used to even stay there. They gave us a trailer. We could stay out back because we do Mon uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday gigs. <clears throat> and one night there was this guy named Lyle and he came in and he had poetry, jailhouse poetry that he wanted to read. Okay. So we're like, uh, somebody said, you know what? Do yourself a favor and do him that favor. Cause he's quite the outlaw and he's very, very big in this town like he's legendary we're like okay but i'll tell you the story later so i'm like brett just play a little guitar for lyle and let him do his do his poetry so lyle's singing i have no idea what he was saying but as it turns out lyle was in the parade in halloween with a mask on p 
peels off, goes into the bank, robs it, and goes back into the parade. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wound up doing like eight years and wrote poetry and was extremely famous in that town for a long time. And 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 they're like, if, I, if Lyle wants to read some jailhouse poetry, I think you need to let him write, <laughs> read some jailhouse poetry. <laughs> so, I'm like it was like Lou Reed, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, it was like yeah, that's uh, funny, that's <laughs> funny, man. <laughs> How did you and Brett meet? Um, you know what? I was I grew up with this guy named Dave, and he was a bass player. We learned how to play together. I, you know, learned drums. He learned bass. We were in every band together, and he was working at a place called the Amity House. It was a restaurant. And he was a short order cook and Brett got a job there as a bus boy. And he goes, Hey, there's this new guy working there as a bus boy. He has long hair. He's a singer and he's got his own PA. I'm like, bring him over. <laughs> we didn't have a singer. We were constantly struggling with vocals wow. and uh, Brett and I hit it off immediately. And I think we learned for the first few years that we were friends uh, probably for the first 10 years that we were friends. I think we learned so much from each other. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, and, uh, but, you know, we tried and tried and tried with that band for a long time. And uh, it, they were just not putting 100% in. They just weren't. Yeah. And, uh, and this happens in, in small towns in Pennsylvania, wherever, uh, you know, you, you have guys that, I think as musicians, we grow up and we're self-centered. It's mm -hmm. like, it's about me. I'm playing. I'm playing. Yeah. You get in a band and it's like, you know. But I feel like, uh, you know, Brett played football. I was a serious team player. He was a team player. And I think that's what it's about, right? So we were like looking for other team players. Bobby Dahl was the next person who was a major team player, who was willing to do whatever it took to get there, you know, literally. And uh, and I love that attitude. And yeah. I feel like we're all learning how to do this thing together. And then we finally found Matt. But we were we had a couple other guitar players in between trying to figure it out. Uh, one guy committed suicide. I mean, all kinds of crazy shit. But, uh, you know, we wound up with Matt. And Matt was a great fit for us for mm -hmm. a long time. He's a I mean, he he worked his ass off. He was there rehearsal every day, he, you know, um, went through all the club scene with us, moved out here, uh, sacrificed all that. Um, and, you know, uh, we did all the clubs and became one of LA's biggest draws with Matt. Oh, yeah. you know, uh, and then, but it just was, it just stagnated. It just it wouldn't go any further. It just, no matter what we did, it just was just stifled. And I'm like, I don't want to be just LA's biggest draw forever. That's not a bad place to be, but it doesn't equate to money. You can't make a living that way because you no. don't make any money here, right? No, no. So uh, maybe it's gotten better. I don't know. So we'd go out to um, different areas of California and go play our cover stuff in between the shows that we'd come in on the strip and do. And that's how we made a living where other bands didn't didn't figure that out. You know what I mean? Like we'd go and play in Covina mm -hmm. and do cover stuff. Some we play one set of our own stuff, but we play like two, three sets of like the stuff we did in Pennsylvania. And, you know, we got paid for it and that's how we survived. And it's like, you know, people are like, how do you survive doing only one or two gigs a month? Well, we're not doing just one or two gigs a month. We're doing like eight, you know, <clears throat> and that's how we did it. But I remember seeing you guys from a small club to a big arena. I'm like, wow, look at these guys. They're rocking to the, the best video. Every Rose Has a Thorn, which was a great video. It shows the touring. It just shows the, the sweat, the, you know, the whole road. It was yeah. such a cool video. Well done. Well, the whole thing was what we loved is going on stage with all this makeup and hairspray. And by the second or third song, the makeup's down here. The hairspray's down here. Like, it's just... It was like, it was working man's glam. You know what I mean? I think a little bit of that got lost in the shuffle, mm -hmm. um, but we wanted it to be fun too. So, I mean, there was a lot of ingredients we were trying to stick into this. We wanted to uh, do all the things that, that we loved in other bands, you know, yeah. 
uh, the work ethic, but the pageantry, uh, but the hookiness, but the grit, but the arena-ness of Van Halen. I mean, we had all these things that we wanted to, to do as many things as we could stick into the ingredients. You did a, you did a, good, like you made the, a good soup. You made a real good soup, my you friend. You made a pretty good soup. We yeah. did okay with it. Yeah. There was some conjecture at mm -hmm. one point that I didn't play on the record, okay? that the producer would sneak in there at night and play. The producer wasn't even a drummer, for one thing. It's me on that record. There's nothing uh, over the top that's, that needs to be replaced. It's a really, really so there, there was rumor, there was yeah. rumblings that you didn't play on this. Yeah. So uh, and, you, you know, and uh, yes, and it's ridiculous. Um, we did do some uh, quite a bit of editing on that record because we had 12 days to do the record. And we're still, we kept changing our minds about how to do, assemble the songs. You know what I mean? So it was, a lot was done in the studio. Um, like, Cat Dragged In was pretty much written in the studio. We had only ever played it a couple times. Wow. So, but uh, Jim Faraci, the engineer, he knows everything. Like, Talk Dirty Me was done with just Jim Faraci. Wow. Like, it was just, it was just him. Like, we didn't even have the producer. The way he did it was horrible, so we redid it. You're supposed to go out on the road now. You're supposed to do a tour. Is this yes. a, yeah, yeah. crew, Def Le Is that true? As crew, far Def as Le I know, it's happening. Yeah, All as right. far as I know, it's happening. I mean, I wish somebody would say, you know what it is? We're still just like everybody else. We're sitting there going, I, I mean, I thought I was going to have to wear a mask just to do this. <laughs> well, hopefully one day we could do jam together or even do a vlog together it'd be fun that'd be fun yeah, yeah a lot oh, of fun yeah. thanks for giving me the opportunity really all i right. appreciate it all Take right care Much of each other and keep rock alive <laughs> it's the only way we, it's only rock and roll we like it you know <laughs> all right buddy i'll see you later all right bye all right bye I want to thank Ricky for showing up here tonight and spending some time with us. But also, if you want to catch more of Ricky, click right on that box right there. Everybody, remember, it's only rock and roll, and we like it. And always remember, who loves you, baby? We do. And follow us on your favorite podcast, whether it's iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify, Artist on Record. Take us with you in the bathroom, in the car, whatever you want, just don't get wild and crazy, all right? <laughs>